Welcome to Mirror Domains Movie News, your place for entertainment headlines. And indeed, this is a live news show for movie fans where we talk about all the trending movie news headlines of the day, including some retirements and uh, some bad CGI extras being inserted into a movie by Disney. Seriously? Hmm. Uh, Hunger Games... Uh, regrets. I don't know about that kind of stuff. It's been kind of a slow movie news day, but we'll try to get through it. Uh, it's uh, Monday, so we'll talk about the weekend's box office report, but we start off today's show by talking about Matthew Vaughn and some reboots along the way, including one for Kick-Ass? What? Matthew Vaughn chants Kick-Ass reboot, X-Men issues, and studio battles. Yes, apparently, yeah. We've heard rumblings that they were going to reboot the Kick-Ass movies. Uh, Matthew Vaughn, I guess, is out promoting uh, some marketing for his upcoming Argyle movie. And uh, people have been asking about certain projects that he's got on the table, um, including this Kick-Ass reboot. Now, do we really need a reboot? That first movie was, well, really well done with Aaron Taylor Johnson. Introduced a lot of people to Chloe Grace Moretz. How can you beat that performance, right? Uh, Nicolas Cage is Big Daddy. I mean, come on. Um, so what did he say here? In a wide-ranging Saturday panel, Matthew Vaughn said um, he thinks new characters are worth exploring. Kick-Ass sort of changed people's perception of what a superhero film is at the time. So we're doing it again. So it's none of the characters from the other Kick-Ass. We'd like to bring them back after the reboot. This reboot is just going to be something on a tangent. So it's going to be something off in a tangent. It's not going to have Aaron Taylor Johnson or Chloe Grace Moretz, I guess, by the sounds of this. And I can't really talk about that now, but it's fun. You guys like the sounds of that? Uh, the important part here. So we'll be doing it again. So it's none of the characters from the other Kick-Ass. We'd like to see them we'd like to bring them back after the reboot. So it's not going to be about Kick-Ass. It'll be another situation, I suppose, where somebody tries to take up the mantle of being a superhero and then has his, you know, trials and tribulations with, you know, kind of a, an elsewhere, elsewhere story uh, within that universe. And I think that's the only way you could do it. I mean, that first Kick-Ass movie, it's pretty sharp and it still holds up today, I would say. And I mean, how are you going to beat Chloe Grace Moretz as Hit Girl? You can't. So, and I think Matthew Vaughn is aware of that. So, uh, yeah. X-Men Issues, what was that? Oh yeah, because he worked on uh, X-Men The Last Stand, right? But then uh, he left. He left, he was originally brought on. Uh, basically, he goes on to talk about how they tried to lure Halle Bailey over because uh, she wasn't signed on. But the original version of the script had Storm saving children in Africa from drought. And it seemed a little exploitative, exploitative to him. So once he found out that that was in the script just to lure, just to lure Holly Berry back, he was like, nah, I'm out. I, I can't believe that you would treat her that way. But she did originally, she did come back for that movie, as we all know. And then it became a train wreck. Actually, I didn't hate some of the ideas in that X-Men Last Stand. It just wasn't, it just got boring towards the middle of where they're like, okay, Magneto, we know that you're coming. Do we have to really sit around in a forest and talk about your big evil plan? It's like, no, just do it. Yeah. Anyway. And what the heck happened? Like, she killed Scott. We didn't, a lot of the things happened off screen. I, I just, uh, yeah. Well, anyway, let's not digress. Um, then he went on to talk about his new movie, Argyle, that's opening up in February with Henry Cow. Oh, no, Bryce Dallas Howard should be the lead actress. She should be in there. I know a lot of people like Henry Cavill. Um, Sam Rockwell looks, looks like it's going to be cool in that. But, uh, yeah, he goes on to talk about a new Kingsman movie as well. So as far as other projects on the horizon, Matthew Vaughn is working on a musical and a third Kingsman movie, which was originally set to be a TV series. Third Kingsman movie. Well, we've had two Kingsmen. Or, and then we had Kingsman, Kingsman, and then Kingsman 
with Ray Fiennes, which actually I really liked. I thought that one was fun. Um, really shocking twist in the middle of that movie that uh, really took me by surprise. And I, we reacted to that. So that's up on the channel right now. Uh, and you can see how shocked I was by that surprise. But I thought Ray Fiennes was, was fine in that. So what's this third Kingsman movie? The third Kingsman sequel will focus on the rise of that guy, the H word, and I'm not going to pronounce his name, and how he was supported by the English aristocracy. The sequel titled The Traitor King was already has already been written and is described as pretty cool by Matthew Vaughn. Despite mixed reviews or disappointing box office results, the sequel will build upon the much mocked mid credit scene from the first film, introducing H word to the Kingsman franchise. Okay. Well, we've seen Nazis and stuff before in uh, movies, so uh, whatever. Uh, okay, fine, if that's the way he wants to go. Um, I think he's got enough clout that if he wants to make a third one, he can. As long as it doesn't cost like $100 million or anything like that. Yeah, the next one's going to be a rise about that H word guy. I don't know. Because the Kings, like the one with Ray Fiennes didn't do all that well. And it sucks. Because, uh, yeah. You guys think about that. Do you think he should come back to that? Kingsman will build on a much mocked mid credit scene. Yeah, the second one, the Golden Watch or whatever. Holly Berry was in that one, wasn't he? Wasn't she? Um, hold on, let me pull that up. Oh, <laughs> Golden Circle or something, right? Yeah, Golden Circle. That's what it was called, not Golden Watch. Uh, Pedro Pascal, Julianne Moore. Uh. I thought Howie was in there. Why is that not? Who who am I thinking of? Who am I thinking of? It's not here in the top here. But who the? What the heck is that, guys? IMDb. Holly Berry. Why is that not? In your, oh God, yeah. That, this is the problem with uh, with this movie is that they didn't have their priorities set straight. You you put Channing Tatum here, but you don't have Halle. I mean, come on. What are you doing, man? God's sakes. Anyway, Kingsman's No, nah, I don't think that's gonna happen. No, I no. In fact, it's time to put that puppy to bed, Matthew Vaughn. And did I misspell Matthew Vaughn's name there? I did. I didn't put two H's in there. Too bad. Ah, whatever. All right. <laughs> Let's move on, guys. Hey, we are a live news show there. Uh, 10.30 a.m. Uh, we usually do it two to three times a week. Uh, we got a quick update about Facebook. Uh, I finally got it fixed. Meta fixed its pages. So Facebook is back to Miro Domains official. Uh, straight up. <laughs> That's been fixed. Uh, come join us on Twitch. Uh, we do some video games over there. Uh, we play a lot of uh, World of Warcraft, Street Fighter VI, uh, Final Fantasy Remake, and stuff like that. So lots of cool stuff there. And uh, let's talk about the weekend's box office report. Or should we do the review first? Yeah, maybe we'll do the review first. Why not? This is a review, and uh, what will happen is that I'll cut it out and put it up on the channel later. Uh, this was kind of a late addition to it, so. Um, Taylor Swift, the Eras Tour movie opened up, and guys, did you go out and see it? It's only a weekend event, I did, and boy, did I have fun with this movie. I, uh, it's long, two hours and like 48 minutes, but you don't feel it because she goes through each of the albums, right? Um, and the way that it transitions between each album, like there's a big kind of switch where the name of the album comes up and everybody's cheers and stuff like that. People dancing in the theater, up and down the aisles and stuff like that, singing along, clapping and cheering. Um, it was a spectacle. 
And uh, I said this in my Straight Outta the Theater reaction. It's just not her that you should be watching up there, too. Her dancers around there and her musicians really added uh, a lot to the show. And uh, th there's been a couple times where I was watching. You should be watching her, but then you're, like, watching the other dancers out there as well. Kind of, uh, yeah. It's a very enjoyable experience. Um, and if you're worried that you're not, she's not going to play some of her big songs, she does. Um, and it happens in a way that I wasn't aware of. I'm not used to this type of a concert uh, show. And I'll play why, because um, I play guitar. So I'm used to seeing, you know, like, guitarists and the musicians do come out there at times. Mm -hmm. But I'm used to, um, you know, seeing Hetfield or, you know, Ian Thornley play their guitar. <laughs> and I like to look at people playing their instruments because I play. Uh, so seeing her dance around on stage was fine. But the way that they worked in a whole bunch of the songs, like she did a lot of songs, she would do like medleys, right? So uh, they would break up like what would be a normal song into three parts, but in each part you would get a little bit of uh, like, um, you need to calm down and stuff like that. So she does play the songs, uh, some songs in their entirety, but she also does like these medleys to give people a little bit of a taste. Yeah, if you want to hear Bad Blood, she's going to sing off like a couple of the choruses and stuff like that. So, you know, she appeases her fans. And that's what she's really doing with this Eras tour movie is appeasing fans and, um, you know, just celebrating her music. And I wasn't familiar with a lot of her earlier stuff, but just being in the crowd enjoying that experience with everybody with every other swifty just a big smile on my face and there was a broad range of younger people older people um, people just overall really enjoyed it let's go over to the tomato meter and see what people are saying about it 100 percent by critics 99 by audience yeah then now this is a uh, a movie that you know you don't look for <laughs> story structure or acting or anything like that uh, so my score sheet uh, is going to be a little bit tough to put together here. Um, it was well directed, Sam Rich. I'll, I'll talk about that in just a minute here. Let's take a look at some of the uh, snapshot reviews. Simply as a technical spectacle, Taylor Swift The Heirs Tour is a dazzling achievement, capturing the sensation of seeing the pop goddess sold out, con uh, sold out concerts in all their enormity and intimacy. Yeah, um, the stage in this really helped her showcase um, each set right like it transforms and goes up and down and um it guts out in the audience so she can go out and talk and be in front of different parts of the audience at different times so it's yeah it's really it's mesmerizing mesmerizing is the correct word that i would use in this linda cook did uh yeah if it's 100 percent, there's nobody that didn't like it the performance uh, I saw in person and what I, is captured here on film is about as close as one can get. Yeah, now, that's something else I wanted to address. So that's good that we saw somebody who saw the real concert and then saw the movie and said, well, uh, it's as close as it can possibly get. And that's good news because a lot of us who are in queue to try to buy tickets to the live show, this is the only way that we're probably ever going to be able to see it because those tickets just get all sold out. And it's worthwhile going to, guys, if you can't. Uh, if you didn't get to it this opening weekend, go to it next weekend if you can. They've put on a whole bunch of other shows. So it, I think it was like running every 45 minutes at the theater that I was at. Um, so if I go to my uh, score sheet and say, well, how, how am I going to rank acting in this? Um, it's just really her singing and performing and the dancing. If I were to translate it to that, I would give it a full two points. Acting, directing, story are possible two points. Directing, I would also give, like, the editing in this is so tight. Uh, the story is just all of her singing and all of her, her music. Um, I will say this one thing. I'll say this one critique about the, the story. Um, and I'm going to knock it down a point here. <gasps> okay. And this is a critique across all bands. Um, her music big wreck um i just composed a big playlist of big wreck songs and when you have that much music side by side you begin to recognize similarities um for me uh because i wasn't i'm not um 
that uh, familiar with all of her category, like all of her uh, catalog, some of the songs, at least in the verses, sounded very similar. And I'll explain to you why. Uh, very early on in music, people realized that if you just jam on one note, it's very hooky. That hooks people, right? Um, and it comes the same way when it comes to vocals. So if you want the same kind of appeal in your vocals, you're just going, dun, 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 and then you're singing the same note. Um, something that is very uh, topical recently that did the same thing with the vocals is um, Baby Shark. Do, 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 do. So it's, it's like that kind of thing, right? Um, it's minor it's minor it's gonna happen when you have like three hours of music you wouldn't notice it in uh the midnight's album when you only got like 45 minutes of music or when you got three hours or something if you're gonna be nitpicking which i'm i'm well, not trying to do you get that uh and when it comes to like big wreck you realize oh you guys play a lot of extended outros for where you're just riffing and jamming anyway uh, enough about that uh cinematography is uh, out of a possible one point each um it's pretty standard but i would give that cinematography like it was beautifully shot in this stadium uh you get right up close to her score or soundtrack the music was an awesome i liked the different arrangements of the music pieces for the songs this is not just something that's cut straight off of like the album where they just put the album on the background and she comes out with sync that's like that no the music was arranged differently so some instruments were louder than they were on the uh album so i appreciated that uh that's why i am giving that score of the score the music score uh the full point so uh we'll change that up here to be 1.8 for that and watchability factor uh as i said you gotta watch it at least once uh, I would watch it twice because of the uh, dancers and because I am a Swifty myself and most people are, I would say you would probably want to own it on 4K or Blu-ray when that comes out as well because it's just so beautiful in its color, richness and stuff like that. It's not a traditional score sheet, but 9.5 for Taylor Swift years to her. Yeah. And I would even, I almost feel bad about saying 9.5, but that's just my criticisms, guys. I had a lot of fun with it. Uh, I am a proud Taylor Swift fan. I'm a Swifty. Are you guys, let me know what your thoughts of the movie were in the comments below. And if, are were you lucky enough to see it in live, uh, to see the actual live show? Uh, let me know if you did and compare it to uh, the actual movie and was it as good? Uh, did it do it justice? <laughs> I hope, I still hope that somewhere along the lines, uh, my queue will pop up for the live shows in Toronto next year. And um, fingers crossed, man. Fingers crossed. All right, guys, that's it. What did you think about my, about my review? Let me know in the comments below, and we will talk about it. You're watching Mirror Domains. What else can you find here on the channel where we do a live show, 10.30 a.m., uh, two or three times a week, where we talk about all the trending movie news headlines of the day. They're on my social media handles that you can follow. And, uh, hey, if you like these kinds of reviews, um, we do a lot of reviews for movies coming straight out of the theaters so uh yeah see you next time on mirror domains all right i fumbled the ball a little bit there but whatever <laughs> all right so let's get back into the movie news headlines and get into the weekend's box office report how much did taylor swift's heiress tour movie make uh, it came in number one. So uh, that's good news. Um, let's go right over to the box office report. For the weekend of October 13th to the 15th, number one was Taylor Swift, The Heiress Tour. Number two was The Exorcist Believer. Number three was Paw Patrol, The Mighty Movie. Number four was Saw 10. And number five was The Creator. The Creator. Now, I believe I called that on Friday that that was going to be the listing. I thought for a little bit that Exorcist might fall below Paw Patrol, and it should have. For God's sakes, I don't understand why people are going out to see uh, the Exorcist Believer, but they are. But uh, looking at Taylor Swift, 96 million 
on its opening weekend domestically, 32 internationally for a worldwide total of 128 million. Not quite the 150 million on opening, but that's great. You got to remember though, this is just for, well, they added shows for Thursday, but it was Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, and that's it. Uh, we're not going to get much more revenue until it comes open again next Friday because it's only a weekend event, guys. It's a weekend event. So if you haven't seen it, I implore you, uh, go out and check out this movie. Even if you're not a Swifty fan, just to see the ambiance of other people in enjoying this movie because it's it's being extremely well received. Uh, I talked about that in my review. 99% by the audience. Uh, people of all ages singing along, dancing in the theater. It, it's it it it's mesmerizing. Taylor is a in huge inspiration to me as an artist. Uh, that she put all of this together. She wanted this to happen. She spent hours and hours working with the guitar and uh, the piano and working with her vocals, hammering out songs. Um, and it's just cool because um, everything you hear about her in her normal life um, up here seems like she's got it together up here. And if she's a good person doing good things, she does these things because she wants to inspire other people and she wants to inspire other people to do good things. And that makes me happy. So her coming in at the number one spot is thumbs up. Now it says 96 million here. I know that some people will try to spin it. It falls short of Joker's October record and people, people will try to make that the headline like Joe Blow has done here. You, but you know how much, how much Joker made? 96.2. <laughs> Joker made 96.2. So 200,000. <gasps> oh, but James, you got to call it out for what it is. But you know what? I still think that that 200,000. It's not a big deal. Whatever. I, I wouldn't make that the headline. And uh, after everything is said and done, it doesn't really matter. Uh, that's not what that was never the objective of this movie. That wasn't her objective to beat the Joker record for October. Uh, I don't think anybody cared about it going in. So we're, we're not going to pay that any mind. Um, yeah, it's not worthwhile. Anyway, uh, Sam Ranch did a good job directing this. Oh, I forgot to say that in my review. It did seem like they've, there were, uh, this was taken from the LA shows. And it did seem at times that uh, they took it from a couple of the, uh la shows like there were different cuts like she'll be turned one way and in in the same song they'll cut to a different angle but she'll be turned an opposite way even though she was singing the same line i caught that little nuances that's why i kind of had to dock it down to 9.5 out of 10 but and th th that's just minor if you, you're not paying attention to how the thing is edited together you're not paying attention to those types of things when you're there uh, you're just watching Taylor and the stage and the dancers and waiting for your favorite song and um, watching uh, how each era unfolds uh, with themes. E each era had a theme to it. She comes out in different costumes and it's just awesome, man. It was an awesome experience. And being number one, it's going to be number one next week too because uh, Killers of the Flower Moon comes out next week. And let's say that Taylor Swift's heirs to her movie gets chopped in half to about 45 million next week. Killers of the Flower Moon is not going to make $45 million. I don't think it will. I think 20 million is uh, reasonable. 15 is probably where it's my, my yeah, it's going to land. It's two hours, uh, 207 minutes, guys. Do you know how long two hours? 107 minutes are in hours. It's uh, three hours and 45 minutes. That's, that's, that's too much for some people. It's too much for even me guys. Uh, Martin Scorsese, you have to learn restraint because this is, I tell you, people put up with it for Irishmen because it was on Netflix and you could pause it and you could watch it in installments. You could watch an hour one day and the hour the next day. This is 
being shoved into theaters at three hours and 45 minutes or something like that. And I, I'm seeing, I'm going to try to hit this 315 show on uh, Thursday. I'm going to try to hit that 315 show, uh, which means you won't get my straight out of the theater reaction until about 10 o'clock because I got to run out to a meeting after that too and take care of some business that uh, has been on the back burner. Um, it, it is what it is, guys. Um, and if I can't see it on Thursday, I'll see it Friday at at uh, 12.30 p.m. And then I'll be out by 5 o'clock. Guys, that's that's awful. That's, that's disgusting uh, that movies are allowed to be that long. Uh, I just saw Taylor for 3 hours and 45 minutes, and that went by fast because it's songs. This is a story that should have, that is enough material for it to be two movies. And uh, people watched uh, Irishman, and they were like, guys, that didn't need to be that long. Scorsese, why was it like that? And I tell you this, as much as I'm looking forward to Leonardo DiCaprio, Lily Gladstone in this, and seeing the performances, it has to earn being two hour, uh, 207 minutes long. It has to earn being three and a half hours. It has to earn that. Because if it doesn't, I'm going to come out of that theater and I'm going to cry foul and I'll say, guys, guess what? This is coming out on what Paramount Plus or whatever, Apple TV or something in like two weeks. Wait for it in two weeks. You don't need to go to the theater. That's what I'll be crying foul for. And um, people have got to stop putting up Scorsese is some big heavyweight that just, just wow, James, where does this anger come from? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> oh, mercy. Oh, yeah, sorry, I'm digressing from the weekend's box office here. Uh, yeah, so um, Taylor will be number one again next week, and then it'll be Killers of the Flower Moon. Then, extra, well, no, I think. Let's talk about Exorcist Believer. Let's because that sort of got me ruffled there. Uh, got eleven million this week um, for a worldwide total of eighty four point nine million dollars. Um, guys, I don't understand this. Um, this is not a good movie. Um, and what's happening here? Despite critics not liking it, despite people. Uh, coming out of the theater and not liking it, despite critics like me and other people online saying that it's trash, people are going out to see it. Um, and there are people out there, pundits, other pundits, trying to spin it as a box office bomb. It is not a box office bomb. It only costs three thirty million to make. Now, people say, yeah, but the rights cost $400 million, James. Well, that's because Universal helped buy it, uh, those rights. So it's not... Blumhouse produced it, but Blumhouse won't see the fallout of it. Uh, only Universal will. But it's still a bomb, James. It's only made $84.9 million. Um, okay, if you want to look at it that way. Um, but if you were just looking at it as the singular movie that cost $30 million plus marketing, it's, it's, it's crossed the break-even point now uh, for that movie's take. And it's fought through audacity of people saying that it's trash because people are still going out to see it for god's sakes <laughs> i just i can't i don't understand uh why do we review movies to tell you what's a good movie or not um and i even when bad movies are out and i tried to tell you what was the good thing in here leslie odom jr was the good thing in here but for some reason people are rewarding this movie and in doing so they're telling the studio that they need to make more movies like this. That's what you're doing. Guys, you want to see a better horror movie, go see Saw 10. Because you'll leave that one going, whoa, I think I just liked the Saw movie. Exorcist Believer, will, you'll leave that movie going, why didn't I listen to the critics? That was awful. Let's go to Taco Bell and get some churros. Yeah, that's what people do. And it's kind of like, well, uh, uh, uh. and then they never think about it afterwards. Ah, it's just, 
It's 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 mind boggling. But anyway, I digress about that. It, it it happens. So we will get the Exorcist Deceiver movie in 2025. And it's going to be hopefully retooled and taken in a different direction so that uh, us pundits and horror movie fans, fans of the Exorcist franchise will go, okay, that one, at least you tried something better than what you did with Believer. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I've ragged on that one enough. Um, what else is significant here? Uh, Saw 10 is, yeah, they've made their money back a hundredfold. Now, the creator I didn't want to see, did that edge towards 79 million uh, with a budget of 80 million? But you got to think of marketing and you got to take the theater percentage. It still hasn't broken even. And it, it's a shame because it's one of the better movies of the fall here, guys. If you haven't seen the creator, visually, it's, it's stunning. It's got its story issues for sure. It does. But of all of them, go see Taylor Swift. That's what I say. Or even Haunting in Venice is even worthwhile. None 2 is still up there. The Blind, that faith-based movie, finally dropped off the top five. Anything else here? The Mission. Divinity. Stop making sense. What the heck is that? That's a re-release. Okay. Um, yeah. So that's the weekend's box office report, guys. What did you think about that? Uh, one more thing about Taylor Swift here before we go. Joe Blow had a poll up. It's a favorite Taylor Swift movie. Um, they want to know what was your favorite movie. Not of her, like between the Reputation uh, concert movie or the Airs tour movie. It's not like that. Or the, uh, what was that? The Evermore Cabin Sessions movie. Not that, Not those types of movies. Where the ones where she actually acts. Valentine's Day, the Lorax. She voiced a character in the Lorax, did she? Uh, she was in The Giver with Brenton Thwaites. Was in that one, wasn't he? Or Is that the one with Brenton Thwaites and Fishburne? No. No, no. no. Um, Jeff Bridges. Oh, yeah, it was Brenton Thwaites. Uh, she played like... Uh, a piano teacher or something like that, or she was playing the piano in that one. That's been so long since I've seen that one. Maybe I need to rewatch that one. Skarsgård was in that one, right? Hmm. Uh, Jonas lives a seemingly idyllic world of conformity and contentment where he begins to spend the time with the giver, Jeff Bridges, an old man who is the sole keeper of the community's memories. Oh, yeah, she was a memory, right? She plays piano in it. Um, and then... Um, Cats, nobody liked that movie. Amsterdam would be my vote. So let's see what happens here. So Lorax is the number one, then Amsterdam, then Cats. Really, I thought Cats would be the lowest one. Because uh, I don't think many people remember The Giver. She was very small, minute role in that one. Uh, but she can act. She can act, guys. So uh, I want to see more acting with her. I want to see her in Barbie too. That's what I want to see. All right. Let's take a quick little break here because we're running a little bit over time. Uh, guys, over the weekend, we finished watching The Fall of the House of Usher from episode one to episode eight, Netflix series. Mike Flanagan, I implore you to go over and check out that series if you're burning through it. Uh, tee up your copy of it and put it up over mine and you can watch it side by side for me. The whole reactions are up on YouTube right now. Uh, episode three of Survivor last week is released from its claim, so that's good. See my reaction at Tribal Council for that. See me get a little bit cheery over I, uh, that reveal. Episode 3 of Hell's Kitchen is up right now, guys. Great season for Hell's Kitchen. That's going. Movie reviews for Totally Killer, The Exorcist Believer, and Pet Cemetery Bloodlines are up right now. Uh, so go check that out. Next. Hunger Games. Now, this is a story that's kind of been lingering on for the last couple of days, or for the last week, it seems. Hunger Game director regrets splitting Mockingjay into two movies. Yeah. I don't know why this is just, it's, it's just popped up again this morning. And it's like, guys, this came out last week. He says, I totally regret it. I totally do. I'm not sure everybody does, but I definitely do. Yeah, stretching out the story into two parts. It... it <laughs> It just seemed to t like I for when I remember the first part of Mockingjay, yeah, it did feel like it lost its 
steam. Because it's the final movie, you just want to drive through, right? Um, ah, it happened. He had some regret. What I realized in retrospect after hearing all the reactions and feelings, uh, feeling the wrath of the fans, critics, and people at the split is that I realized it was frustrating. And I can understand it. In an episode of television, if you have a cliffhanger, uh, you just want to binge it and stuff like that. Yeah. Well, it came and went. Ballads of Songbirds and Snakes comes out next month, doesn't it? Yeah, month, whatever. SNL happened over the weekend, and this is something else that's been splashed all over the big trades, guys. Um, Pete Davidson addresses Israel and Gaza in SNL cold open. Sometimes comedy is really the only way forward through tragedy. Um, he goes on to talk about some of his past experiences. Uh, and it was, like, he has this normal monologue part, and then he, like, tacked, that on in the last minute so that's on the snl twitter or x page and uh, i watched it yeah it was about the right thing to say um yeah this is a thing that's happening in the world right now that sucks and uh there's going to be there is already tons of innocent death and there's no easy way out of this and you have to be careful of what you have to say now because if you show support for either one of the sides, people want to come at you for whatever political agenda they may have. So all you can basically say is that you hope that innocent people don't die. People will spin it into um, varying, varying, grotesque, um attacks and you're like well doesn't israel have a right to defend itself <gasps> oh you are for uh you're pro uh war you're you're a warmonger if you say that it's like yeah um a lot of it because we're still in flux it's happening guys uh not everybody has the right information um not everybody's caught up to date with things so they don't know exactly what's happening over there. Um, the best thing that I've seen to cut through all of that uh, political jargon is just to say, yeah, it's a tragedy what's going on. And um, you hope the loss of innocent lives is kept down to a minimum, even though it appears that it's not. And it sucks. But I do respect Pete Davidson for saying this. For saying this, because it was, uh, was like, yeah, I'm trying to, I'm trying to be funny here in, in hard times, and it's just meant to take your mind off of it for just a few moments, kind of thing. I respected that from Pete. I did. Uh, I'm not going to talk about the Travis Kelsey Taylor Swift thing that appeared there at the after show. I know that that's, I don't. Yeah, they're dating. Whatever. <laughs> let, let 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 them have fun or whatever. Let's talk about Reptile that's on Netflix right now. This article caught my eye. Reptile filmmaker Grant Singer breaks down the ending of his Netflix chart topper. Chart topper. So this is that Benicio Del Toro movie with Justin Timberlake and uh, Alicia Silverstone. Tom Nichols is a hard New England detective, unflinching in his pursuit of a case where nothing is as it seems, and it begins to dismantle the illusionment in his own life. So, uh, it's from Benicio Del Toro helped write this? Fascinating. Grant Singer, also the director. Uh, I do like Benicio Del Toro. Uh, Justin Timberlake has not been the best of actors in the past he's been able to hold his own in small roles like social network and stuff like that but when he's actually trying to headline something it's a little bit uh, in time was a little bit meh, meh, meh. i don't know that movie's found it's called following uh, i do want to check out this reptile movie and i have been toying around with the idea this afternoon that we may tee that up on netflix and take a gander it really depends on how much time i have left when i come back from my walk but i do like benicio del toro i do like alicia silverstone so it's good to see that she's making efforts to get back into the game 
between that and that weird shark movie that she did, what, a year and a half ago. She was also in Killing of a Sacred Deer. So she's, she's been in stuff. Maybe I will watch this movie. Uh, anybody else that jumps out at me? This is as long as it's not too racy and there's no nudity. Uh, and I looked at the parents guide and it didn't appear to be, so we might be able to get away with that one. Uh, I do want to check it out. All right. What's Tiger 3? Why is this all over the pages too? Deadline. Tiger 3 trailer. First look at Bollywood spy pick and interview with Manish Sharma. Uh, Tiger 3. Uh, Salman Khan and Katrina Kaif. Now, is that Bollywood? Is it? Is it Hindi? Uh, okay. Released in January, Python has become the highest Hindi language of all time. Um, but what's this? Tiger Three. Josh Barad. Um. The movie's directed, yeah, the spy universe has also included, included the first two Tiger films, Ek Ta Tiger and Tiger Zinda High. Oh, Tiger Zinda High sounds familiar. Along spinoffs. Oh, War was a spinoff, huh? With Hrithik Roshan and Tiger Shroff. And Pathan was a spinoff. Okay, I didn't know that. Wow. Well, that, that almost dragged... Makes me intrigued because Pathan did come out and people who did see it really liked it. So the trailer for this drops today. Maybe I can react to that and put that up on the uh, Mirror Domains India channel. Let's see if I can do that. Uh, Tiger 3 trailer with subtitles. Eight hours ago. Please tell me that it's got subtitles. Okay, it does. So we will react to that later, and that'll be up on the Mirror Domains India channel. Next, retirements and RIP. Michael Caine retired. The Great Escaper will be his last film, so he officially retired. Uh, he's like 91 now or something. The Great Escaper UK Theater. So that means I'm going to try to find The Great Escaper and uh, watch it in respect to the great career that was Michael Caine's. Um, so he told BBC Radio, I keep saying I'm going to retire. Well, I am now. I figured I've had a picture where I played the lead and had incredible reviews. What I'm going to do, what am I going to do that will beat this? Yeah. I am bloody 90 now, and I can't walk properly and all that. Yeah. They gave me a very good walking stick, and I was able to do some scenes that needed that. I just do them once and then fall over, but just one take, and that's it. Forget it. So, uh, yeah. He's 90. Great career. And I even liked him in movies like Jaws the Revenge. He was the saving grace of that movie for a lot of people myself included. He's never watched the movie because he saw the script and said, oh, this was <laughs> a shark that wants revenge. He still brought it, though. He still brought it as the character Hoagie. Of course, he's in a lot of Christopher Nolan's films. He won't be anymore, though, but that sucks. That's hmm. great career, guys. Great career. Um, Michael Caine, the great escaper, will be his final film. So, That debuted August or October sixth in the UK, and uh, I haven't seen it yet. Bernard Jordan escapes from his care home to attend seventieth anniversary of D-Day landings in France. Okay, well now that sounds very interesting, uh, and the reviews have been good. Linda Jackson, if for him to go out on a high note, why not? He he sees he sees that. Good for him. Oh wow, that's cool. Look at them younger. And then there they are 
Hold it. That's that's awesome. Wow. Kudos to whoever found the, that photo. All right. What was that noise? It sounded like my hot water heater is ready to explode. <laughs> Bifer in the live chat says, hey, hey, Bifer, how's it going? Oops, I forgot to turn on my uh, YouTube chat again. There we go. All right. So we're in the middle of retirements and RIPs uh, over the weekend also. I do want to give recognition to uh, Suzanne Summers. Rest in peace. Long career as well. She wasn't as old, though, as uh, in her 90s. She was 76, right? Rest in peace, Suzanne Summers. But she was fighting something there towards the end, wasn't she? She was sick. She survived an aggressive form of breast cancer for 23 for over 23 years. Yeah. Good career. Rest in peace, Suzanne Summers. All right, guys, I I hate to say that we got to get through some of this stuff, but we do. Um, bad CGI extras. Disney slam for including creepy digital extras in recent movies. Uh, so I guess they filmed some kind of cheerleading prom act thing. Earlier this year, Disney released Prom Pact on Disney+. Plus, and audiences quickly noticed the inclusion of some very creepy digital extras. Oh yeah, look at that. That's these two are way digital. Now we know that this is the precursor to a this is what they've been doing, like hey, um putting in CG background extras and things. Well, that's been around for more than a decade, guys. So it's not far out there. But this is bad. That's that's awful looking. Um I did watch the video of it. And it, 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 uh, sorry about the quality here. This, the, the movements of her are terrible. <laughs> What's this guy doing? It's like, that's bad. I love Prom, prom Pact, Bifer says. So was it worth watching Prom Pact? Uh, did you notice the bad CGI characters? I, I'm just being made aware of this. Um, I'm, I'm whatever. As I said, we've, they've used CGI background to fill in things for a long time now. Like even Lord of the Rings did it, guys. Uh, you think all of those people were out in the field there in the Return of the King fighting? No, there were extras. It's just that they used them up really close and it didn't, uh, yeah, it just, it didn't look good. So they're calling it out a little bit, trying to shed light on, uh, they're, they're trying to shed light on the fact that, ooh, the AI is going to take away from uh, real actors. Well, here's the thing about extras that a lot of people don't know. They have to sit on set for a long period of time, waiting for their moment to be on set. They don't get paid, I don't think, for that part. Uh, it, it's It's awful conditions for extras. So if, you can save the burden of some people like that doing that, then fine. So be it. <laughs> I just, I just, I, I know that people are going to spin it. They are. And uh, I don't think we can escape it. Um, comments. If they want to 100% create digital stand-ins, then so be it. To me, the studio is... That's the studio's right. Actors are completely justified in protecting the digital likeness of actual people, though. I guess that's my question. Are the actual people being properly CGI'd in the background, or are they created from these extras from scratch? Yeah, if they created them from scratch, then fine. But if you took somebody and said, I just want your picture. We're putting you in the movie. You don't have to be on set. We're not paying you. That sucks. You got to pay them for the likeness. 
Kind of like when the creator, the movie The Creator, you can, we'll buy your likeness. Yeah, do that. Anyway, I thought it was worth taking a look at. There's an article up here. Uh, on Twitter that I wanted to talk about next, but I guess I missed it. Um, is that pretty much it for today, guys? No. Um, yeah, let's do the Reddit roundup. Okay, so Handyman from Hell. Official discussion. Let's see what people are saying about uh, the Ayers tour movie here on the Reddit forum. The best part, this is for you. Don't spend $10,000 on a front row seat. Well, that too. Yeah, because um, I didn't say it in my review that uh, you're not going to see her that close and in that clarity when you pay $300 to sit way up in the nosebleeds. And no one really wants the front row seat in the movie theater to begin with. What? What? Our crowd was so low in energy. Seriously, no one behaved crowds I've ever seen in a cinema. No phones, no singing, no ang ang obnoxious behavior. Bizarre. Huh. So somebody had some bad theatrical experience? I still can't believe the song cuts. Oh my God. Well, that's what I said. Some of them are medleys. They're not full songs. So if your favorite song was Bad Blood, sorry, but you only get like two choruses. My One of my favorite songs, You Need to Calm Down, is only, I think, the bridge and a chorus. Extended cut next year, including the four other surprise songs that were filmed. The, the one thing about this, too, uh, I'll, I'll say this is one of my criticisms of the uh, Eras tour, tour movie. Um, because it's all choreographed and thought out before, like it's a show. And I know it's like this with rock concerts, concerts too. But, you know, in between songs and stuff, you can hear them like jamming around and stuff twiddling around with their guitar. Um, you don't get that with Taylor. And even at the end of like, when you would have like a, an encore and you could hear some people chanting a certain song, you don't get that either. Um, you don't get the little nuance of, oh, I accidentally hit the wrong note in this song kind of thing. You, you get the pristine versions of it. But anyway, that's minor. That's that's minor. Uh, lead actor and lead actress Peyton Elizabeth Lee was charming. She played rebooted Duker Doogie Hauser mid. Oh, okay. I'm a huge Taylor Swift fan. I'm waiting for the uh, home release. Okay. Yeah. So some people are having issues with it. Whatever. Is there an actor who had worse luck joining major IP franchises than Amelia Clark? After Game of Thrones, she had Solo and Secret Invasion, which were the only ones that seemed to have watched it. I liked it. I liked Secret Invasion, except for that ending where she got all the powers. Yes, I agree. That's That was stupid. <laughs> Solo, it was disappointing because uh, she was the best part of Solo for me. I wanted to see more of her, and we're not going to. She's talented. Oh, yeah. And then Terminator. Did, did they put Terminator in here? Yeah. Sarah Connor. She was great as Sarah Connor. It's just the rest of Genesis sucked. <laughs> and, and she's still getting roles. She's still working. I want to see more. Is there anybody worse, though? Taylor Kitsch, maybe? Amelia Clark was in Terminator Salvation? Was she? 
she was, I don't remember. Um, anybody else who had worse, worse luck? I don't know. Like joining a franchise for it to only fizzle out kind of thing. Uh, that's a pretty tall order. What movie do you think everyone has to watch at least once during their lifetime? Star Wars? Godfather? Inception? Movies, theaters are figuring out a way to bring people back. The trick isn't to make event movies, it is to make movies into events. Well, that's what this article goes on to say. I read this article. It's just marketing. They talk about marketing. They just marketed it differently. Uh, I thought it was going to be something prophetic, but yeah, it's not. What's the oldest actress you can think of who did a nude scene that was clearly intended to be titillating? Mary Louise Parker. Um, uh, a nude scene. I don't know. There's lots. I don't need to go into that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. Sloth, Slother House on Hulu. Trailer has been released. <laughs> so a, a killer sloth uh, terrorizes some uh, sorority girls on Hulu. Uh, um, a throwback to the grindhouse kind of uh, things. S Slother House. I'll watch that trailer during my breakfast break here. Spooky films may actually aid your mental health. Experts reveal the psychology of Hollywood horror. Well, there's a release to it. There's there's definitely uh, something about being scared in a movie theater, um, in a communal experience that's cathartic, because you do have fears and stuff like that. And just having that release of that pent-up anxiety I think can be good in a natural, not a natural, but in a, in a setting that um, is harmless. Like, I, I'm not talking about like, oh no, there's a bear coming at me kind of scared. <laughs> I mean, like you feel that sometimes in the theater that I believe that that's a safe way to deal with those kinds of emotions and get released. Uh, do you concur that the recent Planet of the Apes trilogy deserves greater recognition? Yeah, it was a good trilogy. It's not going to be a trilogy much for much longer because the fourth one's on the way. Was Apocalyptico was Apocalypto meant to be watched with subtitles? Wasn't there subtitles on, in it anyway? Um, I still think it's Mel Gibson's best movie. It's a good movie, guys. It's horrifying because of what human beings do to each other in when they're allowed to be grotesque. But it's also feel good story too in some ways. No, it's not really when the whole village gets butchered in the beginning. It's just it's just a hard watch, man. It's a hard watch, but I, uh, I I recommend that people watch that. 1999, Inspector Gadget. Nah. Bo is Afraid is really weird and unsettling. The best part of that movie was when he came home and at the end to talk with his mother. There was some really good dialogue in there. There was some really good dialogue uh, interactions for sure, but uh, it just took like two hours to get there. And then you got 40 minutes of some other stuff happening in the background when he's in this big, huge Coliseum type thing. Uh, uh, yeah, I don't know what the heck that movie was. Uh, and then he goes up in the attic and has this big uh, dick monster. <laughs> God, for God's sakes, no. No! <laughs> uh, Bo was afraid it was a huge misfire for Ari Aster. Ah... Uh. Movies that showcase 2000s emo scene, goth people, and aesthetics. 
highlight Jennifer's body. Ginger snaps. Yeah. Palm Springs on Hulu. Andy Sandberg and Kristen, Kristen Milotti. That's one I really like. Talking about time travel and stuff, Palm Springs. That one is really, it's better than Groundhog Day. Um, a lot of people think that Groundhog Day with um, Bill Murray is like this big, funny, laughable movie. But he doesn't start to do some of the funny stuff until like an hour into it. And you realize, no, it's really more about this guy who's depressed about his station in life. And he's not a good dude. And I know the point is that by the end of it, he realizes that he does want to become a good person. But it's not as funny as most people think it is. It's not. Um, anyway. But, it, it, yeah. Palm Springs is a bit like... Uh, uh, Groundhog Day that he gets to reset things over and over again kind of thing. A little bit of uh, Edge of Tomorrow with Tom Cruise. It's a little bit like that, but it's a romance instead. I like that. Next, The Marvels. Set the bomb at the box office. No, why did I pull that? Yeah. Um, talking about event movies. Popularity is going up, and we are going to be doing full live watch-alongs of Miss Marvel, Grumpy Man Reacts, starting soon. Very soon. This week, maybe, even. of Because uh, what is it? Miss Marvel's six episodes? I was thinking about doing two back-to-back -back for three weeks. So uh, let me pull up my calendar here. Yeah, so the 8th would be to, no, next week. On the 25th is when we start. Because we'll do two episodes a day. Right? Miss Marvel is, it's uh, six episodes, right? Yeah, six. So uh, we'll do it like that. Is that it? Is that is that all? I'm running a little bit over time, guys. I, I apologize. Next VHS film, because 1985, VHS in 85 was a success over on Shudder. Um, it will focus more on sci-fi. It's saying that it's going to go into space. VHS in space. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I need to watch 85. It's on my list here. I got I to gotta find a copy somewhere. Maybe I'll try to find it on AMC Plus because I don't have Shudder. Uh, I do want to check it out because apparently one of the uh, episodes is tied to the Black Phone universe. All right. My favorite loop repeating movie is called Boss Level 2021. Is that the one with... Uh, Forever Purge guy, or the Purge guy. What's it? Ah, uh, oh, I forgot his name. Who's Crossbones in the MCU, right? Um, Killers of the Flower Moon was inspired by Midsummer, and Bo is Afraid. Oh, the pacing of Killers of the Flower Moon was mid. Well, Midsummer had some of the worst pacing. What the heck are you talking about, Martin Scorsese? Pacing and length was the undoing of Midsummer. Frank Grillo, yeah. There we go. Thanks, uh, Pfeiffer. And Bo was afraid of terrible pacing. Elizabeth Debicki is as Princess Diana in the final season of The Crown. New Look at The Crown. Paul Mescal. Millie Bobby Brown is ready to say goodbye to Stranger Things. Quote, Stranger Things takes up a lot of my time, takes a lot of time to film, and it's preventing me from creating stories that I'm passionate about. So I'm ready to say thank you and goodbye. So she wants to go off and do other things. Good for her. Good for her. Focus in on your career, Millie. I know that you're still young. You're, you're, you're in love. You're married you're gonna get married really young if you start a family like sophie turner did you 
you may stunt your career a little bit, which sucks to say. I know that's terrible, <gasps> James, but yeah, focus on focus in on the stories that you want to tell. There you go. Child actor's face. Yeah. Ben Affleck will receive Gotham visionary icon and creator. Okay, good. The Hanging Tree, performed by Rachel Ziegler, will be released October 20th. A song. Okay. Fourth grade students were left distraught after their math teacher played the slasher film Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey during class. What? Okay, well, that's the end of that teacher's career. Hey, guys, I... You know how much I love horror, but that's left to the parents. If the parents want them to see Pooh, Blood, and Honey, but fourth grade, fourth grade, you're about seven or eight. You should be able to handle, uh, no, no, I don't know. Uh, no, James. What are you, uh, Millie Bobby Brown. Yeah, she's not, um, she's, a, she's a woman now, guys. America Ferreira, Kelly Spaney for Pope, uh, Priscilla. Yeah, I'm running out of gas here. <laughs> All right, uh, let me go have some breakfast and uh, we'll come back. And we may watch that uh, reptile movie on uh, Netflix. That's all I pretty much have teed up for the rest of the day. Did you see who Chris Evans married over the weekend? No, did Chris Evans get married? Why is that not on here? He married Andrew Garfield. Really? Fascinating. I didn't realize that Andrew swung that way. Um, kudos to Andrew Garfield and, uh, wait a minute, that's not Chris Evans. What's going on here? <laughs> what are you talking about, Pfeiffer? Uh, hold on. Alba Baptista? Is that who he, he, he got married to? Never heard of her. Portuguese actress. Congratulations. Chris Schubert says, hey, hey, James. Hey, man, how's it going? We're just wrapping things up. Check out Alba Batista. She was Mrs. in Miss Harris Goes to Paris. I wanted to see that movie. I just, I, I didn't get around to it. All right, let's check out the trailers. If there's anything else here, I don't think that there are. So, you may junk. Well, I don't see anything else. All right, so I'm going to record my reaction to Tiger 3, and that'll be up on the Mirror Domains India channel in the next hour or so. Yeah, yeah, okay. All right, guys, that's it for me. Hit that thumbs up button, subscribe, and I'll see you next time on Mirror Domain.